All right, we're going to talk about Chapter 10, Section 2 today. This section covers the way different groups interact. Discrimination is when a group of people are denied equal treatment. This is an action or behavior. There are two types of discrimination, legal and institutionalized. Legal discrimination is allowed by law. Examples of this would be apartheid in South Africa and the Jim Crow laws in the southern United States. Both of these laws allowed for the minority group to face discrimination. In South Africa, the minority group was a black population that made up 75 to 80 percent of the population, but had no real power or legal rights. In both cases, the minority black population was segregated, denied equal treatment, and denied equal education and government opportunities. Institutionalized discrimination simply develops because of prejudiced views in society. This makes it more dangerous than legal discrimination. Legal discrimination can be changed by passing new laws. Institutionalized discrimination cannot be changed so easily. Attitudes and beliefs must change to end institutionalized discrimination. An example of institutionalized discrimination would be the white flight that occurred in the U.S. during the years of the Great Migration. During this time period, many black families moved to the big cities of the north. Upon arrival in these cities, the local white population, bothered by the appearance of their new neighbors, oftentimes fled out to the suburbs, thus white flight. Prejudice is when people believe something about a group of people without any facts to back it up. Unlike discrimination, it is only a belief. However, for discrimination to have teeth, to have meaning, prejudice is going to inform that meaning. So without prejudice, it's arguable that discrimination would occur rarely. Prejudice is impacted by perceptions. If someone is raised in, in a prejudice environment, then they will interpret stories, facts, statistics in a way that supports their prejudice beliefs. Self-fulfilling prophecy. A guy named Robert Merton suggested that there are four types of behavior with regards to prejudice or discrimination. First up is the act of bigot. The act of bigot is both prejudice and discriminatory. This guy treats minorities badly and doesn't apologize for it or hide it. Think the KKK or Hitler. The timid bigot is the guy who is prejudiced but does not discriminate. He secretly dislikes a minority group but only talks, doesn't act due to social pressures. He knows he might lose his job or be blacklisted in society if he shows off his racist tendency. The third type is the fair-weather liberal. This is the guy who is not prejudiced in belief but discriminates because of social pressure. Think about the guy who isn't racist but laughs at a racist joke because all his friends are laughing. Finally, we have the all-weather liberal. This guy is not prejudiced and does not discriminate. It's an active choice by this guy to stand up against bigots. There are several reasons that discrimination and prejudice occur. First up is stereotyping. A stereotype is any kind of oversimplified, exaggerated, or unfavorable generalization about a group of people. Examples would include ridiculous concepts such as all Irish people are drunks, all Latinos and Latinas are hot-tempered, or all black people are natural athletes. To someone who is prejudiced, if they find someone different from the stereotype, they consider that person an exception to the rule rather than proof of the absurdity of the stereotype. A lot of times, the mainstream of society decides to blame their problems on a group of people who are too weak to defend themselves. This is scapegoating. Jewish people have been blamed throughout history for various problems. They were blamed for poisoning water wells and spreading the bubonic plague. They were blamed for Germany's loss during World War I and the subsequent economic problems faced in Germany. In America, we've blamed ethnic Europeans, African Americans, and, and Hispanic Americans for unemployment issues at different points in our history. The social environment can also lead to discrimination and prejudice. When a society has a huge difference between those in power and those not in power, discrimination and prejudice is more likely to occur. 
Furthermore, if there is competition for resources or jobs, discrimination and prejudice occur. Various types of legal discrimination were passed by the U.S. Congress during the late 1800s and early 1900s, all aimed at limiting the power, influence, and wealth of Asian Americans because they were seen as competing for jobs with European Americans. We could also study the case of African Americans and, and Hispanic Americans. Due to unfortunate prejudices and discriminations in society, African and Hispanic Americans are oftentimes from a poorer class and given a lesser education. Because of this, African and Hispanic Americans often compete for the same jobs. Thus, these two minority groups have oftentimes had conflict historically in our society. There are several ways that minority groups have been treated historically. First up is assimilation. Assimilation is when you blend a bunch of different cultures into a single group. In America, we've had a tendency to believe in the melting pot concept, like we live as one big happy family. That's at least how our history books have taught it. But realistically, assimilation hasn't happened much. While European Americans have pushed for assimilation to occur by trying to teach Native Americans European customs and values, teaching African Americans about Christianity and giving them English names, and trying to make English the official language for all incoming immigrants, the reality is that while assimilation has occurred, most minorities in America want to maintain aspects of their culture and have actively fought against assimilation. Thus, it's not all that common. Cultural pluralism is a more tolerant pattern of treatment, but, but is rare in society. An example of this might be Chinatown in San Francisco or New York. In Chinatown, the Chinese Americans living there work to maintain their cultural identity, speaking their native languages, wearing native dress, and dining on native cuisine. However, we can't say that cultural pluralism is common across the U.S., only in more tolerant pockets around the country. Rather than engaging in assimilation or cultural pluralism, the U.S. is much more likely to use legal protection for minorities. With this, laws are passed in an attempt to protect the minority population from discrimination in society. Examples would be the Civil Rights Act and Affirmative Action. The philosophy behind such acts is to help foster actions of equality, hopefully leading to a disruption of prejudices at the same time. Another type of interaction is population transfer. In this case, minorities are removed from desired land and relocated to undesired land. An example would be the pushing of Native Americans off of desired land throughout America, relocating them to reservations, some of the least valuable and most agriculturally worthless land in the U.S. Yet another type of treatment is subjugation. Subjugation is when the majority keeps control over the minority by use of force. One example is slavery. Another is segregation. Segregation occurred after slavery ended in the U.S. We saw two types of segregation during this time, de jure and de facto. De jure segregation is segregation based on law, something like the laws in the South that kept black and white people in separate parts of restaurants, in separate schools, and on separate parts of a bus. De facto segregation is segregation based on prejudice or beliefs, something like the various racial and ethnic neighborhoods in American cities. There's no law requiring Cubans to live by other Cubans in Miami, but they oftentimes do. Finally, we have extermination. Extermination is the most extreme form of minority group treatment. It's genocide, the mass killing of an entire population with the ultimate goal being the complete elimination of a minority group. This has been try tried in history, but has not been successful at achieving the ultimate goal. Think of Hitler, Slobodan Milosevic, the genocide in Rwanda, or certain actions against Native Americans in the U.S.